Hello everyone, my name is Craig Chamberlain with Precision Electric, your industrial automation service center. Drives, motors, controls, we do it all. So if you have any questions, make sure you give us a call. Today we're going to be covering the basic parameter and commissioning startup of a Invertec variable frequency drive. I encourage you to have a full copy of the manual, not just what was included in the box, which is a quick start guide. Mostly because there's a lot you can do with this drive and the manual is just a lot more descriptive. So we're going to be using this in the commissioning and you're going to be surprised at how quick it goes. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so to get started, we're going to take a look at page 23 of our manual and we're going to look through these actual parameters 1 through 14 because right out of the box, these parameters are activated. You have to actually activate this extended menu access code if you want to go beyond parameter 14. But for basic commissioning and startup, we don't need to go beyond that parameter. To access the parameters, you simply hold this button down. That's your menu button. And then you can use the up and down arrow keys to navigate through each parameter one at a time. Parameter one is your maximum speed. Typically, you will set this to be the actual nameplate speed on your motor. In our case, it's 60 hertz. So we're going to leave that the same. I'm going to press the menu button again to confirm. The second parameter is your minimum speed. Let's say you've got an application where you don't want it to go below a certain speed. In that case, we would set this to whatever we want that lower speed to be. Again, this value is in hertz, anywhere from 0 to 60. We're going to leave this one at 0, and we're going to move on to parameter 3. Parameter 3 is your acceleration time. This is how quickly, in seconds, the drive will get the motor up to speed. The default is 5 seconds. Now you want to be care somewhat careful with this because you don't want to be too aggressive on your startup, especially if you're starting under load. For example, if it's a compressor or a pump, you may want to extend this out to 20 seconds, 40 seconds, or even 60 seconds. It could be any, any number you want to put in here. If you want it to get up to speed fast, obviously you'll lower this time. For our demonstration, we're going to go ahead and keep that at 5 seconds. One thing that I guess is a pretty good rule of thumb is that if you want it to start up and you're not sure what time frame you're willing to wait, I always tell the customer, as long as you're willing to wait, because the longer you extend out your acceleration times, the less aggressive you're going to be on the motor as it starts. Okay, so let's go back to parameter four now, which is your deceleration time. This parameter is the opposite of your acceleration, so it's actually how quickly you want the motor to come to a stop. Out of the box, this drive is programmed for a ramp to stop, which means it's going to try its best to stop within this time frame. The same rule kind of applies, but inversely. The faster you try to stop, the harder it is on your drive instead of your motor. So again, same rule of thumb. The longer you're willing to wait, the better. So for this demonstration, we're going to keep it at five seconds. Go ahead and press the menu button. Parameter five is our stop mode. Out of the box, it's set for zero. Now, if we look in the actual manual for parameter five, you're going to see that we've got four different options here. We can do zero, which is ramp to stop. One, which is coast, which means you just let the load kind of just rotate until it slow stops on its own. Two is a secondary ramp to stop, which is a fast stop. This actually is a, a less energy conservative version. Three is ramp to stop with AC flux braking. Do not use this unless your motor can handle flux braking. If you're not sure what that is, your motor probably can't handle it. Four is just ramp to stop, but it actually ignores what happens when the power is lost to the drive. So in other words, this is on disable, this is an event that occurs when it loses its stop command. This is what happens when the power actually comes off on the drive. In this case, they're saying, okay, we're gonna ignore the stop method when we lose our incoming power, but we're gonna ramp if we actually issue a stop command. For our demonstration, we're just gonna keep P5 at zero, which is the standard ramp to stop. P6 is what they call energy optimizer, honestly, just keep this at disabled for now because we want to make sure your motor is running successfully without any problems before we turn on an energy optimization uh, parameter, just in case it doesn't affect the performance. 
Next, we're gonna move on to parameter number seven. This is actually going to be your motor rated voltage. Out of the box, our drive is a 230 volt single phase in, three phase out drive. So it's actually going to default to the 230 volt output. You want this to match your motor's nameplate. If I look on the nameplate on the side of my motor, it does actually say 230. So I'm gonna leave this the same. So you'll want this to match your nameplate. Next, we're gonna to go to parameter eight. This is your motor's rated current. By default, it's gonna set it for the max current of the drive, but you wanna set this for the actual nameplate current on your motor's nameplate. In our case, my nameplate says 0.6 amps. I'm gonna go ahead and select it and press the menu key. Parameter nine is the motor's rated frequency. Most US motors are gonna be rated for 60 hertz, so I'm gonna go ahead and set mine to 60 hertz because that's what my nameplate says. Next is parameter 10, motor's rated speed. You don't have to put a value in here, but it does allow for scaling so that the display shows RPM instead of frequency. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up for mine to the 1590, which is actually our rated speed. Whoa, that went way past it. Let's see here, 1590. So if you hold the button down, you'll notice it skips dramatically rather than having to press the button 1600 times, which would take a while. So then 230, 40, 50, and then one, two, three, four, five. Oh, almost five. Let's go ahead and get up there to 1590. All right, almost there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Almost there, and that's my motor's nameplate. Okay. Parameter 11 is the low frequency torque boost. Just leave this the default. Do not mess with this parameter on basic startup. It does depend on the drive what that value is set to. Number 12, primary control source. Now this is extremely important. Out of the box, this is gonna be set for zero. Let me show you the different options you have for P12 because you've got quite a few of them. You'll notice that right out of the box, it's set up for terminal control, which means it's actually using the terminal strip down here for your start stop control. If we wanna run it off the keypad, we're actually gonna change that to keypad control, which is number one. And that's what we're gonna do just for now. We're gonna set 12 to one and press menu. So that way we can actually start the drive right from our keypad. I encourage you to go through all of these options you have for your primary command source and you can essentially read right in the description what each one does respectively. If you don't wanna start from the keypad, you can keep it at terminal control. And then when we get to macros here in a moment, it's gonna give you the wiring diagram for actually setting up that terminal strip for your start control. For now, we're gonna leave this on keypad. And we're gonna move on to the next parameter, which is parameter 13. Parameter 13, is the application mode. And if we look at our manual again, you'll notice we have three options. We've got general, which is a general purpose motor or a general purpose application. We got a pump, which if you're setting this up for a pump, just select pump. And we have fan. And if it's setting up for a fan, just select fan. We're gonna keep ours general purpose. You'll notice on the right hand side what it does when you choose a different option. So if we choose general, it's gonna set our current limit to P54. The torque characteristics are gonna be constant and the spin start's gonna be off and the overload is gonna be to trip. And the same rule applies for pump and fan except for the current limits are gonna be different and the spin start's going to apply for fan. In other words, it's gonna be able to start during rotation. So for our demonstration, we are gonna leave that at zero because this is a general purpose application. Finally is P14. This allows us to actually modify our parameter set beyond the basic parameters. This is a parameter lock. It's kind of hard to come across in the manual, but there are two codes I'm gonna give you and you're gonna to wanna to write them down. By default, this drive locks out any parameters above P14. If you want to unlock the, the standard parameters beyond that, you have to set this to 101. This is actually a passcode. This will let you go up to 
See, now I can go above 14. This will let you go up to P50. Now, beyond P50, you actually have to select it again and change this to 201. And then that will give you access to P50 through 60. And I'm bringing that up in this video because it's a very common question we get. Like, I can't get past P14. And unfortunately, the manual isn't exactly clear on how to get there. So, yeah. Now, before I finish up this video, I do want to switch over to the macros. And I want to show you in the manual how they set up their connection diagrams. So, P15 is a macro, okay? So if I go to P15 on here, this is a macro setting. I have a series of options for P15. It's right here across the top, okay? And this is how it affects my inputs. Now, if I set it to zero, I just go across. I say for zero, digital input one becomes my run command. Digital input two is my forward reverse. Digital input three becomes my anal or analog input two becomes my analog reference or reference select. So I can switch between uh, analog references for speed. And my analog input one becomes my actual speed. So when I choose a macro, that determines the programming for each of these digital inputs. If I change that to one, you'll notice that digital input one is still my run command, but digital input two now becomes my reference select. Digital input three actually becomes a preset speed selection, and digital input four becomes an analog speed input. So as you go down this list, you're gonna see a wide variety of presets that may best fit your application. Now you may be wondering, okay, well, if I choose one of these presets, how do I wire it? Well, what's great about the manuals, if you go one page back, it actually gives you the connection diagrams for each macro. So diagram one is macro number one. And this is an example connection diagram for that macro. In our case, digital input one has an open switch and we can close it. And we know that that's our enable because that's the macro we selected. So we're gonna keep this at zero. And the reason this is important is because in order to be able to start this thing from the terminal strip, we would need to actually issue a digital input one connection. But that's only if we were in terminal control. So if you're in terminal control, the macros are extremely important to you. As we set in, in P12, we put it in keypad control, not terminal control. And I'm going back to this for a reason. Because if I don't go back to it, I'm gonna leave you confused. Because if you don't set up the drive for terminal control, then you can ignore the macros. Because the macros are just for setting up these terminals. So let me go back to P12 here, which was one. And I'm gonna pull up the manual here for P12. One second. Here it is. So remember, we selected keypad control unidirectional. So it's going to ignore anything I set in the macros and anything I set in the terminals. Now there is one restriction for keypad control. Notice that it's in keypad control, but it's not doing anything. It's not starting. Well, that's because I do still need a drive enable for digital input one. So I need digital terminals one and two jumpered so that I can issue a start command because the drive still needs an enable. So I can go up in speed and down in speed and notice what happens if I lose that digital input one. It goes to our stop. So even if you choose for P12 keypad control, you still have to have digital input one made in order to actually issue that start command from the keypad. So in this video, we covered a lot because we basically covered the possibility of setting up our drive for keypad control. And in that case, remember that's P12. If we set that to one for keypad control, we have to have an enable and we can run it from that. But we also covered in this video how you can actually use the terminal strip to do a start stop control as well by selecting a macro, which was in P15. But you can't access P15 
unless you set P14 to either 101 or 201. So these are very common issues that a lot of people run into with this particular drive. But once you've kind of overcome the basic obstacles and you have access to all the parameters, we can move on to more advanced topics beyond this one. But right out of the gate, now we can run with what we set maybe 15 parameters up. So there wasn't a whole lot of setup. It's just there's some odd nuances and that's normal with any drive you might use. As always, thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this video. Again, I'm with Precision Electric. That's at precision-elect.com, your industrial automation service center, drives, motors, controls. We don't just sell them, we also repair them. So feel free to reach out to us at any time and uh, we'll get you taken care of. I'll see you in the next video.